What's up, guys? Uh, as you can see behind me, sorry about the glare, it's a little bright, but it's a gorgeous day outside. Unfortunately, the tides aren't really too good, so um, I'm just gonna tie up a fly for you today uh, and teach you about a fly that I use almost throughout the year. Um, it's kind of a variation of a quan, maybe a little bit like a slider, uh, but it's very simple to tie and it's great for redfish and trout as well. So. Um, what I'm starting with here is an Umqua saltwater size 4 hook. And we're just going to go with a little olive thread on there. Build it up. Alright. Next is size large dumbbell eyes. <clears throat> Tied opposite of the hook on the top of the shank. Um, and just kind of go just kind of just behind the eye leave a little bit of space in case you need to put like a weed guard on there or something and after I set that in the way I want throw a little UV cure on there just a thin shell just kind of to keep it in place nothing too fancy Alright, after that's done, wrap your thread pretty much all the way down to where the shank starts to turn into the bend. You're going to need a little bit of flash, not much, but I just like to take two strands, crystal flash, pearl. Half of them. And then we'll tie those on first. Straight down the shank, going off the back of the fly. Tie those in. It's a little long. I don't like it to go any more than like an inch and a half, I would say, and snip at an angle. And after we've done that, it's time for our zonker. Uh, I used tan or olive, just depends on the water conditions. Uh, it's been a little clear later because the weather's a little bit colder. So I'm going to use tan today. Uh, if the water's really murky or you've had a lot of rain recently, go with something darker for sure. Because you don't want, you, know, you just want it to be visible in the water. I know I'm sitting here just opening random drawer after random drawer. It's because I'm not finding we're gonna have to edit this part out okay after some mild searching we're back olive rabbit zonker tan rabbit zonker we're going tan today because the water's been a little bit clearer and we can afford to go tan when the weather's a little colder when the weather's warm you got some algae blooms in there and stuff like that the water's Dark, tough to see through. Definitely go with a darker color. Alright, just kind of clean off that little end piece. We want to feed the center of it, feed the hook through the center of it. Leave a little bit of a tag end on there. Move it, push it all the way down. Set it back in your vise. And this little tag end that you can see right there going to be a good place for you to seat your thread on it. So we're going to go with a chartreuse on this one. You don't need too much. Just a little bit. Um, a lot of guys like to do the dubbing loop and stuff like that, which is very, very nice. I just like to twist mine on. Just 
so. Give you that nice little end there. Then you want to take some fur, craft fur, purple or chartreuse. Just for something different. We're going to make this one purple and chartreuse. Purple craft fur, extra select. Extra select gives you this little bit of extra length that I like. Go ahead and remove a section about yay big. And you wanna hold it together and then remove the under fur. Just pick that out. The bottom section of it, you can see all this small fur that's coming out. And that'll just help this section to really lay down and then the tail end to pop up. Not really to hide the hook, but just gives a little bit of a distraction in that area. Tie that tight all the way up to where you are securing your dubbing. And that way it'll make that fur stand straight up like you see there. Tighten her up and trim off the rest. Clean that up a little bit. Try to build up the body here, just to make it even with the rest of the thread that you put on. Maybe just a slight taper. And then we'll add in the body. Uh, a lot of people like to use the EP fiber. I've just been using yarn lately. Um, you can get a ton of it for really cheap. And it's kinda easy to tie on, just with it being wound up, and then once you comb it out, it gives you a pretty, pretty nice size body. So two little strands at a time. Now, we've got the body built up. I unfortunately only have some 40 pound mono here, which is not what I like to use to build a weed guard. This is a fly you will fish in the weeds, so you need to have a pretty decent one on there. So we're gonna do two prong instead of just single. Same thing here, just some, some thin shell. Something to kind of hold your knot together. So once you get to this point, you can see that it is kind of an absolute jumble. 
We're gonna take our bobbin needle, pick it out, trim it up, make it look fancy. So, speed her up for a second, and we'll join you when she's cleaned up. All right guys, so there it is trimmed up. Wand fly in purple and chartreuse. Little flash, the tan rabbit zonker. Purple extra select claf craft fur, craft fur, craft fur. The chartreuse dubbing and then the yarn body. You can see how much it builds up after you comb it out a little bit. It's nice and thick. Lead eyes will help this drop, give it a lot of movement in the water. So pretty much good year-round fly. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed and tight lines.